Hi. Uh, carrying on from the, the last film I made. Does your Aikido work? So, Mr. Fei, my Tai Chi master, how do you make mass power? You know, how can you throw somebody as if they're like a piece of paper? To you, they weigh nothing. You just call forth all your relaxation that you can have in your body at the same time you call everything forward and you you do a throw you do a technique if you've done a nikyo or a sankyo or any immobilization with this type of power sadly it it snaps their elbow their arm their wrist It's not a good sound. Um, when I was a very low grade, I, had a, I was trained with a karate person and he resisted and I didn't know any better. And I looked at the technique that I was shown and I'd done it and his wrist snapped and it sounded like a very large carrot being nice, crispy, raw carrot being snapped. Straight away I apologised, didn't realise what I'd done. He said, he looked at me and said, oh don't worry, I've had it broken before. I mean, what an idiotic thing to say. I was devastated because I never really wanted to hurt anybody. But he resisted when we were halfway through the technique. And because the technique was strong, perhaps I was strong as well, but because the technique was strong, to try and stop a technique that's, got, that's working and truly working, you're mad to try and stop it. Saito Sensei always said, you must not resist or fight. This is not what's asked of in this dojo, in the Awama dojo. There was a sign and it said you would be asked to leave the dojo if you're found fighting. I'd like to show you this uh, book again from my Tai Chi master. Again, you can see him in the air. And there's some more pictures here of him with the spear. Now, the reason I'm showing you them is if you get the technique correct, and focus your mind concentration with a flexible body all on the one thing that you're trying to do you can create mass power but you do need the technique to be right so technique to me is everything so he gave me this spear and asked me for a screwdriver we unscrewed the the metal spear from the bamboo Pole. He asked me for a small ball bearing. So my father used to repair bicycles. So I went to the drawer, got a small ball bearing. He placed it in there. And he was teaching me how he was taught. And when you're a child, the grandfather teaches you. So in his early childhood, his grandfather would teach him and develop him and show him his Tai Chi. Wushu, we'll say Wushu. The Western world knows is it a Kung Fu. So I'll say Wushu. When you become what they consider a mature person, your own father starts to teach you. When you've grown up, if your grandfather's still around, you've perhaps got a family of your own, you've matured, your grandfather comes back to teach you again. So there's a whole process. Now, the person that said, Mike, it works for me. I've been on seminars in my younger days and my Aikido didn't work for me. 
because what I'd done was every month I would try to find a seminar somewhere and I would go to it in the UK. And with all the different styles, sometimes I was fine, my techniques worked, and other times it just didn't. In this uh, COVID period, we've had a lot of time to study. Well, I have, anyhow. Study YouTube. And a lot of what I see, and this is being very judgmental me, is awful. It's really terrible. I, I sometimes wonder how they can call it Aikido. Anyhow. The first one I'd like to talk about in my is it's in my book but you don't need to buy my book to do it. It doesn't matter whether it's a Sankyo pin, but you get to, to this position. Okay? And you can see even the top masters, Sankyo, Nikio, they get the person down, they're in Swariwaza. Look at the YouTube, prove me wrong. Even the very, very top Japanese masters, you'll see them doing this. They do the pin on the straight arm, being locked against the chest. And then they go and they fold it. They go and fold the arm after they've done the technique, where you'll see this cross. Like that. Now, if you want to be a martial artist, and like Mr. Fay, he put the ball bearing in the spearhead, and he made me day after day thrust with that spear. And he said when he first showed me it, when it sounds like this, you have it correct. He thrust, and you heard the ball bearing bang as if it was like a, the bang of a, a child's cat gun, you know, it was, the crack was so loud and precise that you could tell, not just technique, but the power he sent down that bamboo pole. So to me, training to be a martial artist needs you to be precise and work hard towards it. You've just taken somebody, because you, to me, you should think martial all the time. You've just taken somebody, they've gone to attack you, whether it be on the mat or in the street. You shouldn't distinguish, you should try and do the best technique you can all the time. A constant. This word Zanshin, it means awareness, so you don't have to be like looking everywhere, scared up, down, is anybody going to attack me? In the end, you relax the eyes and you see in up, down, side to side. You relax, by relaxed eyes, even though I'm looking at the camera, I'm seeing everything uh, in my peripheral vision to the sides. Now, I've just got this guy, I've pinned him down. Look at the demonstrations on YouTube, like I say. You've pinned him down, you've made him tap, and then you go and fire at his arm, politely put it on his back. That's not martial. That is where I get really frustrated that it's done. There's, a, there's another one that I'd like to just show you. I'm, I'm not going to go into great detail, but the next one is a Kodagash. Everybody loves Kodagash around the world. Kota Gaish, as we know it, is a small wrist twist. A small wrist twist. Okay. If you look at the picture here, it shows the elbow bent. If the elbow is bent, it's not a small wrist twist anymore. And it means that you've helped Uke to be able to pull in his arm, so he can pull it back in. And you won't get a coat of gaish because he'll be more powerful than you. Coat of gaish is a small wrist twist, so you eject the person to right angles. And yet, look at the videos. The next thing I'd like to show you is 
why go back to back on a coat of ice? The person comes to grab Shomenuchi or the attack, various attacks. I believe that when we all first started, most of us panicked because we're just beginners, you know, we panicked. And if somebody comes to strike you, then you'll panic. And since he said Aikido is redirecting someone's power, you can't redirect it if you only grasp their hand or wrist at the bottom of their strike. You have to blend with it as it comes down, shadowing them, and you then redirect it. So this means you control to where it goes. This picture here, you will see I have it where my navel is. It's about where your belt knot would be. Please t t play, take, uh, pay attention to this because most people will have it much further down between their legs. Even the Iwama people, they will, there's a close up, okay, of how you hold it. But I've blended down to that point. If we go back to when we panicked and we just follow it down, even top Iwama teachers, I see them taking it down below that point. Look at Saito Sensei's videos, look at his books, and you'll notice it's where mine is. I'm not saying I'm the greatest Aikidoka, because I'm not. I'm just saying that perhaps I see things differently to how others see it. If you take that down in between your legs, you have to bring it back up to throw. So those 30 centimetres further that you've allowed the arm to go. Because you have to bring it back up, it comes up in a circle. It can't be ejected at a right angle. From the centre point near your belt, it can be ejected from that point with a very short lift, hardly anything. Take it between the legs and you have to lift it. That makes it circular. And by making it circular, that is why that arm was bending on the other picture. So we are causing our own problems, our own weaknesses. The last one I'd like to show you now is Kaitanagi. I see in Kaitanagi, again, top Japanese, Westerners, everybody, they they put the hand, this, this picture here, they put the hand there on the head. Some even put it deeper, right onto the neck. This is incorrect. This takes strength. If we look at this picture, you'll notice that I'm on the crown of the head and his arm is upright. So these are just snapshots of what I'm showing you. But you should be able to hold the arm, two fingers or one finger on the crown of the head, and that it's a forward motion, slightly down and in towards their body. If you can't do it with one finger, and control your partner, then you're not doing Aikido. Because a small person and a large person should be able to do our senses Aikido. We be, we've all believed this, but a small person can't do hand on the back of the neck here, or, or anywhere on the head, because a strong person can stand up or press against it. When you get a chance to try it, try it. But please look at, you know, spend your time looking on YouTube. They do it, they hold the back of the neck, they turn the partner and throw them. This is when Uke is happy to just take the Ukemi 
I'm not. I have to have the technique done on me and it must work. I won't resist it, but it w must work. If you do what I tell you, if you, the crown of the head slightly forward in the correct direction, a child could do it. I, I've shown this on even video somewhere where a child is controlling a, a large adult because the angles are correct. The sensei said the technique is strong. Tony, you don't have to be. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed those small pieces. I hope to talk a lot more about technical in the future. And thank you for your time. Please subscribe to my channel if you're keen. And uh, I hope in the future to give more. Thank you. If you do wish to buy my books, you can find them on Amazon.